Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon again, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels. We are going back to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we do the usual disclaimers, all right, folks. If you are unfamiliar with the Stop the Shocks campaign or the campaign against the troubled teen industry, you're going to find all the pertinent links right there in the description box. Please, in particular, take note by the the article written by Neuroclastic, a small non-for-profit started by Autistics for Autistics. In it, they interviewed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to the JRC's so-called behavior modification program. The Judge Rotenberg Educational Center doesn't want you to read that article so much. They threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit. They did not remove it from the website. Neuroclastic has refused, so you know the drill, folks. Please read the article. Share it on all your social media. Also included in there is Neuroclastic's public statement regards to the defamation lawsuit threat, as well as a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding just in case the JRC actually does ever see through with their threat. Trigger warning one, when we discuss places like the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center and Agape Boarding School for Boys, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips or surveillance footage of people with mental health issues and disabled people being tortured and abused. If you got young children present, please make sure to go ahead and use your headphones, all right? Trigger warning two, this channel is marked not for kids for a reason. We use profanity on occasion and speak on dark subjects. If your child is 16 and younger and they're watching this, very obviously parental supervision is very much advised. Now I want to talk on a particular subject that has triggered my interest. (sighs) And it's this sickness that seems to have taken over society. Both right and left have it. It's the triggered, right? Triggered, triggered. Everybody's fucking triggered about something. What we don't discuss about this is the fact that you've got people who go looking for triggers. What do I mean? Let's use, for example... Let's use our freaking President Cheeto. Long may he reign outside of office and far away from me. People are deliberately going into this because they want to be triggered. What do I mean by this? Should we not be paying attention, Tiff? Don't you care? You're damn right I care. I have to deal with these bastards. Many of us advocates do. It very much influences how we will and deal in order to make sure our human rights are protected. However, when I observe what's going on, I try to do it from a third party perspective. As an individual without a dog in the fight. And the reason because is that if you want to find confirmation bias for your triggers, you'll find it. When you go digging and digging and digging for evidence specifically to agree with the conclusion you've already decided on, leaves no place for new information or new facts, doesn't it? No room at all. It's almost like a drug addiction, isn't it? People are getting addicted to being triggered. They want to get pissed off. And it's because, I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. It's social media, folks. We've got our asses in our screens almost 24-7 in a way that I've never seen before. There are things out there in the world before the design of cell phones that you can go out there and advocate against in a positive manner. Instead of using it as an excuse to enter into a grudge match. See, there's this anger that comes out of isolation. That stems from loneliness, 
pain and sadness. All because we've forgotten how to turn off our screens and interact with fellow human beings. And I'm saying this as an autistic who really doesn't like people. Okay? And I'm just as guilty of it as anybody else is. We have a sickness. We crave that conflict. We crave that triggering. We almost crave that rage because we're not going out there and getting it in the real world. Because we're not going out there and dealing with the real conflicts in the world. We're not really tackling the hard questions. We're doom scrolling and shit talking. What would we answer then, Tiff? Does that mean we need to get our heads out of your, our screens? Yes. No, I'm not going to tell you to do anything stupid like throw your phone in a lake. But try something simple. When you're at work, your phone is off. No checking notifications. No checking text messages. No checking your email, no online shopping, nothing. Eight hours of day while you are working, that phone is off. No excuses. Because what you'll find, and I've done this experiment, is you start engaging with people on a level that is actually satisfactory. You start real engaging. That's where real sharing and growth and friendships actually start. So try it. Turn your phone off eight hours a day. No checking it, no rebooting it, no nothing. You're at work. And let the people who love you know you're at work and that unless it is an absolute dire emergency of somebody's going to the ER level, then you are not going to be answering any phone calls, text messages, or messenger prompts until you're off work. It's crazy how clear your head is. How all that minutia, all the crap, MSN, and everybody's pouring into your heads while you stare at that, your screens, how much more peaceful and calm it is when those things are not in there constantly crowding up your brain. Then you start getting addicted to that and interacting with others. And all of a sudden you're finding all those things that you used to do, the rage baiting, all of it, just to feed that addiction of triggering. You meet it out in the real world and there's, it's not synthetic. It's authentic. It's real. You can touch it, grasp it. You can hear it with your own ears. Then maybe, just maybe, I don't know, we may finally start seeing all of this stand war bullshit come to an end. At least for those of us who are in our 20s and higher. All right. To the disclaimers. If you are unfamiliar with the Stop the Shocks campaign or the campaign against the troubled teen industry, you're going to find all the pertinent links right there in the description box. Please, in particular, take note of the article written by Neuroclastic, a small non-for-profit started by Autistics for Autistics. In it, they interviewed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to the JRC so-called behavior modification program. The Judge Rotenberg Educational Center doesn't want you reading that article so much. They have threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit. They did not remove it from the website. Neuroclastic has refused. Folks, you know the drill. Please read the article. Share it on all your social media. 
Also included in there is Neuroclastic's public statement regards to the defamation lawsuit threat, as well as a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding just in case the JRC ever actually does see through with their threat. Trigger warning one, will we discuss places like the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center and Agape Boarding School for Boys. You're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with mental health issues and disabled people being tortured and abused. If you got young children present, please use your headphones. Trigger warning two, this channel is marked not for kids for a reason. We use profanity on occasion and speak on dark subjects. If your child is 16 and younger and they are watching this, very obviously, parental supervision is something that's very much encouraged, all right? Bleh. All right, folks, where we left off. Response. The FDA discussed numerous reasons in the proposed rule that researcher bias and author conflicts of interest may have influenced study results and conclusions. For example, in respect to the underreporting of adverse events and regarding poor study design at 24400 at 24401, and this comment does not address any of them. Thank you! All right, it's like spinning in a circle until you pass out. All right, they've gone over it. And the fact of the matter is the only case that we have circumstantially that anyone has any form of bias when submitting data is the goddamn JRC. The few studies that they found outside of the JRC actually supporting their bullshit are hilariously outdated. The, one of the studies that they actually put forward as support for this insanity is a report that not only completely and utterly disagreed with them, but again, hopelessly outdated. All right. The study they provided that they did, which I'm sorry, should not have been allowed under any circumstances, considering they're the fuckers who developed the device, did not follow any of the protocols that a true clinical study worth its salt does. It was not held up to scrutiny before any panel. It was not put under any rigorous testing like every other single medical device and medication out there. They had no oversight, folks. No oversight. That poor design that they're talking about, JRC, was you. But let's continue, shall we? Instead, it points to the testimony of one of its experts regarding some blinded N equals one studies, a study design that combines information from single subject trials. Oh, for fuck's sake. Matthew Israel once said that he thought that this device should be widespread throughout the world to control us. I got your fucking control right here. Nobody controls this bitch. Nobody. Just, just saying. It's just, you're talking single to single trials, and that should be given the same legitimacy as an actual clinical study that is forced to go under scrutiny in all the trials that every other medical device is supposed to go through. And these things aren't even close to being remotely similar. Single subject trials are fine in the beginning. But as a device starts, you see what I mean, right? Even for a single subject trial, let's fine, let's play devil's advocate. All right, folks, single subject trials. It's still not being held up to the same scrutiny as all the other medical devices in use. There is still no oversight. There's no panel 
There's no clinical trials. There's no nothing. Nothing. So what use is it? Waste of trees. Okay. Waste of trees. But you're just as pretty and it's, it's true because you have a bias because I don't want to be shocked at 85 MPA. Sure, if you want to call that a bias, I call it self-preservation. Oh yeah, that's right. Nobody ever asks me. <laughs> You're one of them self-preservating autistics, aren't you? <laughs> Get me out of this state. Anyways. Single subject trials. And why are they not being given the same weight? It's because it's being done by the fuckers who created the device. That's confirmation bias. It's also rejected because those single subject trials that the JRC tried to pass off were not scrutinized by others with no ties to the JRC. It is shown out because there was absolutely zero oversight during those trials, nor has it been corroborated or replicated since in results of others. It's not biased, it's Science. We note that no N equals one studies have been conducted on the use of ESDs for SIB or AB. Thus, although study designs may reduce or eliminate researcher bias, this observation does not reflect the state of research into ESDs or for SIB or AB. And FDA is not revising our views regarding bias or the reduced weight we have given biased evidence. Thank you. It's not biased just because it doesn't agree with you. For the love of God, let me say this so they hear it in the goddamn back. Just because the evidence does not agree with you does not mean that it's biased. Cold, hard evidence does not give two shits about your feelings. Okay? The science has spoken. The JRC should have gone the way of the dodo a long goddamn time ago with the rest of its brothers and sisters from the institutional era. And everybody in the science and mental health and new treatments communities are wondering how the hell it's still standing. We're going to close on that, folks. We don't get very many views on this channel. The few we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So if you could, please don't forget to hit the like button. Hit subscribe. And don't forget to hit those comments. I appreciate your time, folks. And as always, we here at Smilling Tea hope you have a good one. I got to go check the mail now. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>